What's happening everyone? Welcome to the channel and welcome to the VSR10 build series. This is episode 3. Today we're going to be having a look at the hop-up unit made by Action Army. I'm going to go with the install. We're also going to have a look at how I'm going to build this and some of the maple leaf hop buckings. So today's video is pretty straightforward. We're really excited because I'm going to be getting into most of the barrel side of the things. Uh, as you can see here, I have a barrel. This one is made by Action Army, this inner barrel. It is 6.03 millimeter and it is 430 millimeters in length. Some of you guys will notice that these are parts we previously owned. They were salvaged from our BSR 10 build before we had to get rid of everything. That's why they're still here, luckily. So this is an Action Army hop unit. As you can see, there is some wear on it as we had it in our previous build, as we said, but it's working perfectly. So we're keeping it for this build as well. Anyone out there who's using their Action Army hop unit for another build and are salvaging parts from a previous build, do note that the BB stoppers inside, as you can see there, those two little black things in there, those can wear out as that's where the nozzle engages them. They get shoved out the way by the nozzle and sometimes they can wear out. You should check your BB stoppers to make sure they're not ground down or worn out to the point where they cannot be used. If they are, you can buy replacement parts made by Action Army. We got two of them here just in case, but we don't need to change them on ours. The replacement ones are see-through, which is quite nice looking. The hop-up rubbers that we're going with are the Maple Leaf Autobot hop rubbers. Do note that they come in different degrees. What this means is generally the hardness of the rubber. What hardness you go for will depend on your build, what FPS you're giving out, and the ambient temperature that you are playing in. We got some in different grades and we've decided to go for the 70 degrees. Those of you wondering what that is, that's a little retention ring which goes on the outside here and what it does, it is supposed to hold everything together slightly more tightly when everything is secured and that will aid in air sealing. We'll see how that works out when we install it. We're just going to slide this on there and install it straight, making sure that that part there, the little line inside, lines up with the cut on the inner barrel, just like that. And we're going to just push down slightly here, doing this motion, making sure that it is seated correctly and everything is snug, nothing's protruding and it is aligned, not being canted or anything. Now we install the little ring that came with it and you do so by placing it. You don't pop it in that way. What you do is you pop it in this way, only widening the ring slightly this way so it can slip on. That little section that's been cut off is where this part goes. That's what ours looks like once installed. And we're now going to install the inner barrel onto the Action Army hop-up, being very careful not to pinch or tear anything. There we go. Next, we slide the retaining part on. We're tighten up all the screws. That's this one, this one, and this one. Once everything is fully aligned, you then screw in the three screws. Since we've been using this unit for a few years, we thought we'd give you some feedback on how the unit has performed for us, not in hop-up wise, but in installation and uninstallation. All these screws have been fine, except for that one screw there. This is the screw that holds the retention piece in place. And I guess we must have tightened it just a bit too much when we were installing it because this was almost, it felt like it was seized in there and it took a lot of force to get out. This was very worrying for us because if we rounded the head, it would have been really bad for us. Luckily it came out, so we're gonna install it now. And this time we're gonna do it so that it's not too tight and just slightly nip tight. Now it's time to install the hop-up nub. We're going with the Maple Leaf Omega nub. And as you can see there, it is slightly curved. To make sure you install these correctly and aligned, you need to be slightly more critical with it. That is because sometimes when you install them slightly crooked and the hop arm here comes down, the nub may get caught on this little ledge here and not fully seat into the correct recess there which means the nub should be going down like this. And instead, because it's caught on one section, it starts coming down like this. What I like to do is put the nub on top of there and then aligning it correctly, making sure it's completely in the center there. As you can see, it's already gone through. I'll probably have to maneuver this one up slightly when I install it so that it is in the correct position of this retention arm there, as you can see. And don't forget to install this spring as well on the little recess here. Do note that when you're installing this nub, just putting it on there isn't enough. You need to push down slightly to make sure it is actually inside the recess and can slide forward and backwards a little bit. 
until this arm here goes onto it to hold it in place, okay? Try and line this up as best you can in preparation for that arm so that you know that the shape of the rounded arm there, as you can see there slightly, it's rounded to go with the contour of that. Make sure that is roughly in the place that you need it to be before you lower this arm. That little spring that goes there, it's a spring that normally goes into this little recess here, which pushes down to keep the lever on tension. That can be slightly more difficult to align. If you're having lots of trouble with a stubborn spring, what you can do is put a little bit of thick grease on the top there and then just put it into this recess so that it stays in there. And that will allow you to lower it without it falling out. And that's the hop rubber set for us. Before we install this inner barrel into the outer barrel, we're going to install some barrel spacers. This is probably the most important modification in this build. Those of you who don't know, their job is to grip onto the inner barrel, creating some tension between the inner barrel and the outer barrel, and that mitigates some vibration, which in turn equates to better accuracy. If you don't want to buy barrel spacers, you guys don't have to, you can make your own. We're not gonna be talking about that because I think there's a few guides online already showing you how to make barrel spacers, so we just went ahead and bought some. One tip we will give you though, if you're buying barrel spacers for your build, is make sure you get the correct barrel spacers for your inner barrel matched to your outer barrel. Now we'll explain what we mean by that now. Inner barrels vary in size and length. They also vary in the tightness of the internal diameter, but also in some barrels you get slightly fatter barrels as well. These are specifically marketed as thick barrels. So if you get some barrel spacers, make sure the internal diameter of the barrel spacer is matched to the outer diameter of your inner barrel. You also want to make sure that the barrel spacer is correctly matched to your outer barrel. As you can see, on most VSRs or clones, the outer barrel is tapered, meaning it's fatter at one end and gets thinner towards the tip. These two barrel spacers are the same size because they're designed for the G-Spec barrel, which is one size from tip to bottom. If we were to buy the correct size for the standard size outer barrel, you would get one wider one and one thinner one, which goes towards the tip. They're very easy to install, making sure that you don't pinch the internal O-ring as you're doing so. Both of them installed, they look kind of like this. When you're installing these, sometimes they can become very tight inside the outer barrel. And when you're pushing it in, what that will do is sometimes grip onto it and push it out of the position you want it in. If that happens, what you can do is you can tape some tape around the center of the barrel to keep them in place, acting as stoppers. We're just gonna take these ones off as that was a demonstration. As we did tell you, these are for the G-Spec barrel and this is not a G-Spec barrel. Do note that the standard barrel of the Tokyo Marui VSR10 has its own plastic spacer here. If you don't want that, you can just remove that. That's not really essential of having, especially if you're installing or making your own barrel spacers. I'm now going to reinstall the block here with those two screws there. And that's the barrel installed onto the receiver. We're now gonna do a quick compression test. The compression test I'm going to do is to the inner barrel there, not the outer barrel, just so that you guys know. There we go, I think we're good. So the rifle's now partially put together. We have here, as we said before, an Action Army Teflon coated cylinder, which has an Action Army M150 spring installed in there. The Springer Custom Works piston and the Springer Custom Works spring guide. Now with the M150 spring installed and this setup, I should be getting around 500 FPS, maybe just a bit over. So there's not really any point in us showing you a chronograph test, but we're gonna do a chrono test anyway, because there's a tip that we wanna give you. Now, those of you out there who have built your airsoft rifles for years, you're gonna know this, so it will be no surprise to you. But those of you newcomers to airsoft, you'll probably find this tip really not only fascinating, but quite handy as well when it comes to building your own rifle. So what we have here is a chronograph. We're gonna show you an initial test and then we're gonna make some hop up adjustments and show you the tests afterwards. Now the BBs we're using are the Tokyo Marui 0.2 gram perfect hits and we're using an X Scoretech X3200 Mark III chronograph. So just to let you guys know, the hop up has not been set. It has just been installed very briefly and we'll show you what we're chronoing at. Right, let's do that chronograph. I just moved everything to give you guys a better angle. Okay, so I'm gonna install these BBs one by one and we'll see what the FPS is at. So 455 for the first shot. 
a little bit underpowered for what the spring is, but we'll show you why that is in a minute. Four sixty. Now we're just going to make a really small adjustment to the hop up, and this is what we wanted to show you. As you can see the hop up adjustment is done there with a little Allen key or hex wrench. This goes in, and we're just going to turn it ever so slightly this way. Let's see what FPS we're getting now using the same BBs. Six five, come up a little bit. Now let's make another tiny little adjustment. And as you see, it's gone up to 479 with a very small adjustment of the hop up. I'm just going to adjust it one more time and see where it sits at. It goes in there like that. Let's turn this up a tiny little bit. And for the last test, turn it up just a tiny bit more. Or up to 499. I can keep adjusting it and it will go all the way up to probably about 510, 515 FPS. But this is just a, a quick showing of what setting up the hop-up unit properly would do. Now it's important that you know that you don't set up your hop-up unit or hop-up adjustment to, for a desired FPS. You're not aiming to get the sweet spot of the best FPS all around. What you're supposed to do is tune your hop-up adjustment to the correct weight of BB you're using. So there's no point in tuning it here for say getting the highest FPS possible. Obviously it stops as you get to the maximum point of all FPS possible but that's not always the correct adjustment for where your hop-up should be set at. You should pick your BB weight first then you should take your rifle and chosen BBs to a safe shooting range or distance that you can shoot at where you can set the hop-up and then you set the hop-up to have the correct BB lift for when your chosen BB weight reach reaches the end of its flight path, it can go up slightly and carry on a little bit further just to gain a bit more distance. But that was just a quick showing of this handy little tip for anyone out there who is working on their own rifle. And there you can see we're at 517 after another little bit of adjustment. That concludes the showing of the FPS and hop up adjustment. And this is how we're going to set up our rifle. This is how it's going to sit if we take it out for, I don't know, maybe we will play a game in the future. But if we were to use this rifle outdoors or for some longer distance backyard plinking, this is how we're going to have it set up and this is how we're going to take it out. The reason I say that is because I'm doing kind of a modular build. This is how it sits like this, but what I'm also planning is I'm going to plan on doing a short barreled conversion for this. That means I can have everything set up as it is. And if I needed to go outside, all I had to do prior to going out blinking was remove the stock, unscrew this barrel and install the short barrel. And we'll do that in the next episodes. So that almost concludes today's episode of the VSR 10 build. I'm now going to unscrew this barrel and then keep it safe. And that will be our modular part. But before we go, I wanted to talk about a scope that we're going to be using. So obviously if we're using a this rifle as it is here in the stock, we're gonna be using a scope with it. So it needs a scope mount. We'll probably talk about that in the next episode, but we do wanna to touch down on the scope that we had. Now the scope we have now is one of the last scopes that we had when we had our airsoft collection, and it's the last remaining scopes. Some of you guys will recognize this scope from a previous video or some previous videos that we did. We've put a few add-ons on this scope, but we do get quite a lot of questions regarding what scope we were using on those videos. So just in case you guys are still wondering or some of you guys still haven't got the answer, I'm going to tell you now that this scope is a Hawk Sidewinder 30. 
as you can see there's the Hawk logo there. It has a magnification of 3 to 12, a body tube diameter of 30 millimeters, a 56 millimeter fully coated front lens, easy to adjust, fully resettable to zero turrets, parallax adjustment from 10 yards to infinity, and a five brightness level, two color illuminated reticle. And if you're unsure what these add-ons are we've put on, these are quick adjust levers which we got from Rowan Engineering in the UK. And they are very, very good pieces of equipment. We did tell some of you guys that we were into air rifle hunting and we had previously owned quite a lot of air rifles. This was one of the scopes that we sometimes used for air rifle shooting. And one of the worst features about this scope was that it had a side adjustment wheel for the parallax adjustment here. So that lever there adjusts the parallax. Before we purchased this lever, it used to be a really big wheel, which was no joke about this big on the scope. And sometimes that would get in the way of feeding magazines and stuff. So we got rid of the wheel and we bought this lever from Rowan Engineering. And that gives us a really quick and easy to adjust parallax wheel. Also, sometimes when you're using an air rifle or any shooting platform, there might come a time where you need to switch very quickly from a chosen magnification to a higher magnification or vice versa, from a higher one to a lower one. But because the adjustment rings sometimes can feel very, very stiff, Rowan Engineering has, has made this quick adjustment lever, which is brilliant. So that's what these adjustments are. So hopefully that answers some of your questions about the scope and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for checking out our VSR 10 build and I hopefully will see you in the next episode.